Today we're going to talk about how ESPN's college football playoff predictor gives Oklahoma just a 24% chance to make the college football playoff and a 5% chance to make the national championship game. Are you serious? And all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting that like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU-related, college football-related, sports-related. We have a good time. So we're going to get into the math and the mechanics behind ESPN's college football playoff predictor and how I have only started to wrap my head around that. But first, some news and notes you need to know. Starting with Lincoln Riley describing how the Ohio State Zach Smith situation has become a teaching moment for himself, his coaches, and his players. For those of you who don't know or just need a refresher, college football reporter Brett McMurphy broke a story proving Ohio State Buckeyes coach Urban Meyer had knowledge of domestic abuse allegations made against his ex-wide receiver coach Zach Smith by his ex-wife Courtney Smith. In the wake of Urban Meyer denying that he had knowledge of this situation, as late as July, he has been placed on paid administrative leave while the Ohio State investigators do their job and give an assessment of the situation. Now, no matter how you slice this, this is a bad look for Ohio State, Urban Meyer, all involved. You could even say a black guy for college football because this is not anything that anybody wants to be associated with. And while Lincoln Riley did not have to comment on this, because Lord knows folks have been doing Lincoln Riley's light work on this, it was still nice to hear him go in-depth and long on this with his assessment. And here's what he had to say about it. It's something our school, our university, with our Title IX department, our administration, they do a good job of educating us on that. It's something that we have talked about beforehand. It wasn't anything new, but it was a good chance to remind guys that whether it's you, whether it's one of your family members, Anybody involved in anything, we've got to report it. We've got to. We're mandatory reporters. There's no secrets in this world anymore, and we've got to be honest with each other. We've got to communicate, and that there's obviously no room for any of that on our staff by your or one of your family members. You know that happens here? They won't work here. And so they know that. We have good people, but it definitely is a chance to remind them because it's obviously a thing, something like that. It doesn't affect just you. It affects so many people. Absolutely right. Kudos to Lincoln Riley. And for those of you who just listened to these videos, look up, see what the Patreon folks have paid for. We got better lighting now. If you want to support the channel on Patreon, there is a link in the description below. Shout out to my best friend Ron, who helped me put these lights up. The next thing you need to know is it looks like the secondary, the safeties in particular, have made themselves a new moniker. You might recall that in 2011, we had the Sharks with Tony Jefferson, Aaron Colvin, and company. And then in 2015, with Zach Sanchez and Ahmad Thomas, we had the Wolves. And in 2018, we got the Dogs. Justin Broyles, Robert Barnes, Khalil Houghton, Trey Norwood, Jordan Parker, all those dudes have affected the moniker of the Dogs. And they have Dogs all over this defense in 2018 if you let them tell it. Trey Nord said, I feel like everybody on our defense from the top of the depth chart to the bottom of the depth chart is a dog. Each and everybody, everybody out there, I feel like there's not going to be any slack. We just have that mentality, like I said, to prove to ourselves that we can be that top defense. I feel like we're coming along. Now you gotta know Trey Norwood has been around long enough to hear folks like me bag on the defense when it comes to the statistics and flat out give it up too many points, especially in the Rose Bowl. We know that OU was ranked number 87th in the country in passing yards allowed. And we know the Sooners ranked 101st in defensive S&P last year. That cannot be the story in 2018. There's too much talent. There's too much want to. There's too much know-how at each one of these positions for these guys not to follow through on this idea that they can put the clamps down on anybody who lines up against Oklahoma's defense. And that competition is bearing out. Trey Norwood again. We're competitive amongst each other and as well as the offense and anybody else that lines up against us. And I just feel like we're a very tight-knit group and that makes the competitiveness even much better. I'm excited to see it bear out and I'm also in love with the idea of this dog mentality filtering down from the secondary to the linebacking core where Lincoln Riley has noticed the depth and noticed the competition. So much so that he's moved John Michael Terry to the Jack linebacker spot because it feels like Deshaun White could come on and be a capable backup to Kenneth Murray Jr. in the middle. The money quote from Lincoln Riley when it came to the linebacking situation was this. It's a dog fight right now. 
and I love that. And it feels like the fall camp program is doing exactly what it should, where they're overloading the new guys with information, they're pushing everybody to the limit, the rest days are right where they should be, so that they can come back, do it all over again. You find out what the limits of your offense and defense are in August, so that you can play to the strengths of the team come the season. The next thing you need to know is that CBS Sports bowl prognosticator Jerry Palm made his assessment for who he thinks will make the college football playoff in 2018, and he wasn't shy about listing Oklahoma as among the final four. Saying, quote, I am picking Oklahoma to repeat as Big 12 champion and land the last spot in the CFP despite the loss of Heisman winner Baker Mayfield to the NFL. The Sooners could have Kyler Murray at quarterback. He has signed a big contract with the Oakland A's to play baseball and will begin that career at the end of the season. If it's not Murray behind center, it will be Austin Kendall. Lincoln Riley will try to duplicate the success he had in his first season, which was one of the best head coaching debuts in college football history. Lincoln Riley knows all of this. Kyler Murray knows all of this. Austin Kendall knows all of this. The entire OU program expects to make it back to the college football playoff. The tools, the weapons, at wide receiver, at tight end, at linebacker on the defensive line in the secondary, at running back. Rodney Anderson, hello, makes Oklahoma a sexy pick to get back to the college football playoff unless, of course, you are ESPN. ESPN released its college football playoff predictor. Now, what's not a surprise is that Clemson has a 67% chance to make it back to the college football playoff. And then there's a drop off to 47 and 46% for Alabama and Georgia respectively, but Oklahoma has just a 24% chance of making the college football playoff and a 5% chance of making the national championship game according to ESPN, meaning there are six other teams ESPN's college football playoff predictor believes have a better shot at making the playoff than the Sooners. Now before I go nuclear on this bit of fluff, let's take into account ESPN's criteria for its college football playoff predictor. The five key factors according to ESPN analytics are strength of record, which they describe as how much teams accomplish, FPI or their football power index, or how good teams are, number of losses, which you would think figures into strength of record, but okay, conference championships to which Alabama points at you and laughs, and independent status, which only affects Notre Dame. I really think Notre Dame should be made to join a conference because this independent BS is, well, BS. So taking a look at the college football playoff predictor, you expect to see Alabama, Clemson, and Georgia there. But Notre Dame, as the fourth team, meaning they're their pick to make it into the college football playoff makes no sense to me, along with Washington at number five and the Buckeyes at number six. The Buckeyes don't even have a head coach. Yet ESPN still figures that Ohio State has a better shot to make the college football playoff than OU. Like I said, I can see Clemson at 67%. I can see Alabama at 47 I can see Georgia at 46 But then you fall off a cliff for me. Now this is also bothersome because it means that ESPN expects Alabama and Georgia to double dip again, which means that one of those two teams isn't going to have won its conference championship. But we know from the college football selection committee that winning a conference championship doesn't matter. Alabama didn't even win its division, got the week off, then went in, beat Clemson, and won a national title in overtime against Georgia. You can't tell me that having that extra week off that extra no game of no wear and tear, being able to watch everybody else fight for college football survival in their respective conference championship games doesn't help Alabama. And when you know that conference championships don't matter and you can still win a national title, why would you even put conference championships in your college football playoff predictor? The national champion didn't win a conference championship. The national champion didn't win a division title. But I'm talking about this because it's ESPN who is the worldwide leader in sports or maybe in making up predictors that don't actually matter or make sense. Let me know what you think about this college football playoff predictor in the comments below. That's it for me. Deuces.